Do you want me to do the intro? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back to Launching Us. This is a podcast where we talk about us becoming small business business owners and the journey it takes to kind of get there. So um, how's your week going? This has been a rough week already. Like <laughs> The weekend is like we're, we're ending the weekend out. Uh, we're trying to, another night to record these podcasts. But this has been a, a long spring break, but also kind of like a the heavy last couple of days for sure. Yeah, I, I think I, I told a friend of mine, I was like, it's really cool because I'm working from home and um, and as w- like working for the business and working on the goals that I personal personally have on another business and, and all of the things that I'm doing. Um, and I, I find myself working 16, 17 hour days um, and taking like 15 minute breaks here, an hour break there um, and really just, you know, working. Um but it doesn't feel super, super heavy until I hit the weekend and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be taking the weekend off. But it's not like a nine to five where you, no, would, not you were not get your Fridays. And, I mean, your Saturdays and Sundays off. The business still has to run. There's still things that I have to complete. So um, it's been really amazing. Um, I, I'm excited about the limits that I'm I'm pushing myself further yeah. than I've ever pushed myself. Um, but more than anything, I just feel tired, but I don't feel exhausted. No, no, no. It's just a lot. It just, I feel We're working. Yeah. It's, like, it's just work. I don't know if there, you, you understand like the difference where it's like the, I feel tired, like, Oh, I could go for a nap, but I don't feel exhausted for, with my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think one of the things I think that it is, is that, um, we're working for something. Yeah, yeah. And so because we're working for something, I don't think there's an exhaustion. An ex- yeah. I, I totally butcher that word, um, which <laughs> I've watched almost every episode multiple times. And I am not a good speaker with the enunciation. I even messed that word up. Um, so bear with me, people. Um, I'll get better over time. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, you will. But, over, but working for our own business. I don't feel like we get to exhaust exhaustion because there's a purpose behind it. Yeah. And, and so because of that, we'll, we'll definitely feel it. tired. Oh, I got something. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely feel tired um, because we're working a lot. Like yesterday we sat on the couch watching a really good documentary uh, yes. called The Rescue about yeah, the, I think it was Disney 13 channel. kids yeah. or 12 kids in the coach yeah. uh, in the um, Thailand yeah. And so it was a really good documentary. But as we were watching it, you were on Instagram working. spicing it up and working <laughs> and getting things going. Um, you know, the night before we were shooting promos for our graduation stuff that's coming up. And so like, man, you know, it, it it's work for sure, but there's a good purpose behind it. Yeah. And and I think that um that that's a great segue into the mindset, right? Yeah, last yeah. episode, last week, we yeah. talked about mindset and it was uh, really great. We got to kind of touch a little bit on, on our journey. Um, but this week we are going to be a little bit more intentional and share kind of the um, this week and for the f- next few weeks, we're going to be a little bit more intentional and in sharing what are the things that we actually did to, um, correct or change our mindset. Yeah. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about and focus on this uh, podcast was this specifically, episode. yeah, this episode was specifically the books that we read. Uh, I want to read a quote that I got from um, the um, Insider um, magazine. Uh-huh. And it, it says 85% of rich people read two or more educational career related or self-improvement books per month wow. compared to 15% of poor. Wow. 85% of rich. Yeah. And so, wow. uh, um, one of the things that, um, I did knowingly going into this, um, this new season of life was I upped how many books I was reading. Um, I've always been a, a reader, but, um, 
I joined a book club that would hold me accountable on the books that we were reading. It's for well, realtors. Also, two Christmases ago, I got you a, a subscription to Audible. Yes, it's which the best. has really like kicked you up. Yeah, like it you has. read all the Harry Potters um, <laughs> in, in the whole in one book in one month. <laughs> yeah, you read like real estate books, and so like having that subscription has really freed you. Yeah. To read. Yeah. And I've read them multiple times, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. or I've listened to them multiple times. Um, one of the things that I love about books is not only the fact that, you know, you can, you have them, you can put them on your shelf or whatever, but that you can go back to them, refer back to them over and over and over again. Yeah. And so for me, I listen to my books multiple times. There's mm -hmm. one book that I'm going to be listening to for the third time. And, um, and I'm the really. Chambers of Secrets. No, no, no. <laughs> no I let someone borrow that one. Uh, I, um, the, the book, the, um, the Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. I really liked that book mm. and um, I'm actually going to talk about it today, but I'm, I'm really pumped. I think that the books that we're going to be sharing here today specifically all have to do with the um, Avia Creative yeah. and, and w the purpose why I read these books were specifically for Avia Creative and for um, real estate, which is what I'm, I'm, I'm doing personally. Yeah. yeah Cause and, you're in a book club right now. That yeah. You just, and I yeah. am in a book club to hold me more accountable with my reading. Um, and then I also um, read um, specifically educational books in the field that we're doing. So like yeah, yeah. business books, um, how to, how to create, business plans, how to apply for grants that are specific for business, own, small business owners, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I read for fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we, we try to read every night for our kids. Yeah. We, we, we try to pick, we're really trying to pick up reading. Like I am not a reader, um, by nature. I'm not a reader. I was really bad at reading in school. I had, um, a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. And so like growing up, I would say the color blue for glue yeah. and by versa i would say glue for blue yeah. that's the main one i remember because i remember sitting with uh my teacher um my reading teacher and it was a uh, paco if you're from galveston you'll you'll know paco because he'll ride his rollerblades or <laughs> on the seawall and he'll dance um and so he was my, my reading teacher or my speech teacher growing up and i just remember going over that word several times several times and um so i'm, I'm just not a reader by nature but I do find value in books. And so like right now I have four books in front of me. Um, one of them I have not picked up reading. The other one I'm in the kind of in the middle of it. I pick these up randomly. And then these two, I think I've read at least twice in the last year or so. Um, so do you want to, let's go ahead and start with well, well, your Before books, we go into that, yeah. book, like what's the, what's the value in like picking up a book for people online that's not readers, like, for me, the value in these books is because someone's already been through what I needed to go through. Yeah. Like someone's already wrote the time, took the time to write down these stuff. Like this one's probably one of my all time favorite books. It's called Steel Like an Artist. Uh, we'll put links down in the bottom for you guys. Um, this one's probably my all time favorite. I think I've read it once last year. I'll probably read it again this year. And I know I've read it twice before. Um, it's such a good book and it's such a short book. Um, obviously it's not no longer, no bigger than the size of my hand. Um, and it's just one, it's super creative, like the way they, they did the whole inside. So it's very, um, catching to my ADHD type of mindset. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, you know, birds, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do stuff like that. And so like this book's been really helpful, but, um, he's already like, been through the industry he's in that field he's in the creative field um so to kind of hear his mindset and the way he talks and the way he um his theology on, on creativity is really good for me yeah. like i sometimes i need structure in my life because like i said i can be everywhere so i need structure in my life to kind of help guide me and this book really um did that for me yeah um reading this one has been really freeing one for my creativity um, and then two, just because it's a good book and it makes me feel smart when I read. Um, so having books like this makes me good. And then, um, this one is a really great one too. It's called manager day. But the reason why I think we're focusing on books today 
is because someone smart has already took the time to write this down for us. Yeah. And so what what's your reason why? Like I I've I've been talking about my reason why, but what's your reason why and like why you prefer books as our first like resource for people? I think that the reason why for me it's the first resource is because when you when you read books, it enhances your knowledge. Yeah. And with knowledge comes power. And with power comes um you read the quote spider man. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, with knowledge comes power. And with power comes confidence in mm, yourself. Yeah. And then with confidence in yourself, you begin to believe that you can do it. And so, like for me, it, it's been a a um a domino effect. Yeah, um where I I I had to read as much as I could to get started because yeah. I'm one of those people that if I don't know what I'm doing, then I won't do it. And I have, I think we haven't really talked about me a lot in the sense of like, what, what are the things that have held me back? Mm -hmm. But the main number one thing, um, was fear of failure. And so, um, instead of reading, you know, fictional books about, you know, you know, characters and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Um, I changed, what I was reading and changed it more geared to what I wanted to do yeah. to give me the confidence and give in me the field, knowledge yeah. in the field that I was searching for. That's good. Um, and so for me, that's the reason why books are so powerful. And then after reading a couple of books, I've come to realize that reading is one of the key elements to what wealthy people do. Mm. And if I want to be wealthy, it's kind of like, you do, you know, yeah. you are who you're around, right? Yeah. And so if I want to be wealthy and I want to elevate our family to another level, um, then, or we want to elevate yeah. our family to another level, then I need to start doing what wealthy people do, right? Yeah. So that, that goes right into the, almost like the idea of this book, because the book is called Steal Like an Artist. Um, and it's not the concept of just, oh, you should rip everyone off. But it's, I'll, I'll read a quote, because this quote really is what kind of sucked me into this book. Um, it's from this French guy, and I can't pronounce his name because I'll butcher it. <laughs> uh, but it said, everything that needed to be said has already been said. But since no one was listening, everything must be said again. Um, and I think that's crazy. Like, it, it's true for, like, even fashion right now. Like, this old school grunge feel, Jinko mm. pants wearing style. Day, yeah, style. this whole 90s style is back. Yeah. I just can't wait for the glitter eye, uh, the glittery <laughs> mascara. Not. not everything comes back, but some, <laughs> some stuff's come back. And so it's kind of like this idea that everything has already been said because no one was listening or because it got over people's head or because the, the culture has already changed. No one cares about that no more. And so it's time to say that again. And so this book has really helped me out on that idea that I can steal ideas. You know, if something happened in the early 80s or there's a style from the 90s or even from the 50s, if there's a style that came out or this type of art that came out, I can steal that and tweak it to my own. And the, the Or like book, mimic it. Yeah. Well, not even mil mimic it. It's I, I love the concept of stealing it because once you steal it, it's now yours, mm -hmm. not legally. Um, but, but you yours. would uh, edit it. To yes. Yours. And it's yeah. mine. And so now I'm able to tweak it, change it, make it come out, you know, my style or, you know, a VO creative style. Like we're able to mold it to how we want it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's how like new things get developed and new things grow and whole styles are changing. And so like out of, out of this book, I, I kind of like changed my like my thought process on creativity. Like for years, I was like, oh, I got to be creative. I got to find something. I got to do something. I got to find, I, you know, I got to think something that no one ever thought of. And I, and I got to, I was driving myself nuts. Mm -hmm. um, so after reading this book, it almost like freed me up to be like, okay, my job isn't to dis is to create. My job is to discover. Yeah. And that was something that freed me up. As soon as I, I, I came up with that, 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 that thought process, that quote that I kind of live my creative side with is... It's not my job to create. It's my job to discover because everything's out there. Different elements or different ideas are out there. And I just have to 
tweak that, tweak this, tweak that, and kind of make it my own and throw living through that discovery type of eye versus like this. I've got to create something. Yes. Yeah, like this desire. Like I got I got to build something new. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, it's impossible for me to do that because everything's already been kind of said. And once you create something, yeah. you, then you're going to have to create something else and create. Yeah. Yeah. And so this book has been really helpful with like just changing my, my philosophy on creativity. Um, one of the other things that this book really helped me with is um, take time to be bored. The book says, it said, take time to be bored. One thing, one time I heard a coworker say, I, I, when I get too busy, I get stupid. Um, and the idea is that you get so caught up in the day-to-day life. You get so caught up on editing, uh, talking, podcasting, blah, blah, blah. You get so caught up in, in being a husband, being a father, being a coworker, being a staff member, being an employee, a boss. You get so caught up in all these things and that your day is so basically set up that every minute, every hour you're doing something and you never allow yourself to be bored. And it's in that boredom where real creativity kind of starts to birth itself. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the other things that we're going to be talking about is different routines that we built up in the last few years. Um, and one of the things that have been helping me out is in the morning, I kind of just sit, I listen to music, I, I read my Bible, I, I do my morning thing and I kind of just sit. I feel super lazy doing it, but I just sit. And then these things just start flowing to my head. Or even when I'm driving home from work, it's only like a 15, 20 minute drive. But in that time, like my brain just starts going like, oh, and like even last week, you you we were in a meeting. You looked you looked at me. You go, you have an you have an idea, huh? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like my head was just going, and I was just really bored in the meeting. Um, sorry if he ever listened to this podcast, but he was boring. Um, but man, my head was just going. Mm-hmm. And so this book has been really helpful. But well, what's the one book that you've read um, last year, this year that's been your main book? So I've read. Um, I've read these, the books that I am sharing here today, I'm, I've read them uh, over two times. So uh, one of them I've read three times and one of them um, and the other two I've read two times. Um, so the first book that I want to share is um, called Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. And I read this particular book about um, the values of leading um, because being a business owner, you have to be a, a, a positive leader, an effective leader. Um, and I, I know um, that I am a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know sometimes by, by talking to you, but yeah. I am a total control freak. And so one of the things that I... Um, I'm a preventative person. I try to be at least as preventative as possible. Um, and so one of the reasons why I read this was because I wanted to change um, the way I viewed leading um, mm. because, right, we we learn by the people that we've seen lead. And if you have very unhealthy role models of leaders in your life, then um, – then it's very easy to fall into their patterns. Yeah, you become who you hang out with. Yeah, yeah. so um, Dare to Lead was one of the books that I first read and I try to implement a lot of these uh, these things that I'm gonna talk about. So um, the first thing is valuable isn't, uh, vulnerability isn't weakness. And so one of the things that particularly with me is that I live with my, um, my heart on my sleeve. Like I, I give everyone like the benefit of the doubt, right. Face to face that like face to face value. Like I give everyone in the benefit of the doubt and I can tend to be a little too vulnerable with people. Um, and I've always thought especially specifically with leadership that you can't show vulnerability. And so I love the fact that um, we, in this book, I learned that vulnerability isn't weakness. Mm. And I learned that there is certain ways we can be vulnerable and still lead effectively. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the second thing that I learned about this book was being a leader um, is being trustworthy. Um, and, Um, she used, um, uh, like a word to, to kind of give you all of the different things that would be 
in that, in the wor- trustworthiness. And it's the analogy, I guess it would be is mm-hmm. braving. Um, so it's boundaries, reliability, uh, accountability, a vault, integrity, non-judgmental and generous. And, um, and I loved that. Like I actually have this written down um, in my notebook where it says, it says to be a leader, you have to have good boundaries, be mm. reliable, reliable, um, accountable, a vault. You know, if someone tells you something in confidence, keep your mouth shut. Right. Um, integrity, uh, non-judgmental, which I, I have like a underline under that one, um, because I can be very judgmental and I don't say it out loud, but my face says everything. Um, and I, I think there's definitely one thing about both of us. Our, our face can give us away yeah, so we, fast. Yeah. We don't really hide much on our face. <laughs> no, we yeah. don't. Um, and then the other thing that, um, that I love about this book is that it talks about resilience is part of every brave leader's DNA. Mm. And so um, resilience is part of every brave leader's um, DNA. Wow. Yeah. And so one of the things that I love, I I love that about this book and that actually inspired me to pick up this little, um, so I really do a lot of declarations and affirmations in my okay. life. So, um, I ha before I worked with, uh, nonprofits, I, I would partner with nonprofits with my, with the agency that I worked for. And I picked one of these cards up from Gulf coast here in Galveston County. It's called I am resilient. And it goes through as I, my mind, body, and spirit are strong. I embrace all life's challenges. I face my fears rather than hide from them. I choose happiness every day. I believe in the power of hope. I believe my life with, um, trust and courage. I set goals. I can't, um, possibly accomplish and then grow into the person who can, I am resilient. Mm. And then it keeps going. And I love this. I say it to myself at least once a week. Um, and it, it stemmed from this book. Um, and then lastly, um, I don't worry, um, to be perfect. Mm. Um, again, I am a control freak. (laughs) I, I do my own rose. Don't worry. It doesn't have to be perfect. You have to just do it with the with the best of what you could do, um, with your, with the excellence, um, and the quality that you are able to do. And, um, and if you give it your all, then you did well, you know, and I think I have to keep telling myself because if I don't do it perfectly, I can be really harsh on myself. I think, um, a lot of people can be their, their own worst critic. Um, and I am a testament to that. So when I, when I talk about fear or not leading well, there's so many components that go into fear, right? Like there's a lot of variety of the reasons why I felt fear but when I read this book, it was probably one of the most empowering because knowing I was going into being a small business owner and then eventually leading teams of people yeah. um, that I wanted to be the best leader that I could possibly be, be yeah, because and like practice Right now, that. Our, our, our business consists of two employees, yeah, you and I, and then we have two or three contract people that we work with mm-hmm. as well. And so, but eventually we want to hire those people full time. Eventually mm-hmm. we want to have a, a a brick and mortar type of, uh, you know, place. We want to have a, a, a venue, Wedding studio, venues, yeah. um, office space, um, to at least be the first one to be a, kind of all three, um, hopefully. But the goal is that we're going to lead these people. Yeah. You know, and we want to lead them into prosperity. We want to lead them with, with love. We want to lead them with determination. We want to lead them with that resilient mindset. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, with everything that's going on in the world right now with, um, you know, Ukraine and everything that happens there with, um, everything that's just that every time, every, like every five years, there's always like something huge that's know? happening. Yeah. Yeah. Something that can shape the market, something that, that moves, you know, finances around or anything that happens. So like if we're not resilient, um, if resiliency is not part of our DNA, I, I love that line. Um, then yeah, we're going to, we're going to send that vulnerability to our coworkers, to our staff, to yeah. people we work with, to different brands that we work with. Like if we, if we don't have that confidence, not proudness and boastfulness, but just confident, yeah. um, then yeah, we're, we're, 
we're kind of leading them down the wrong path. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I know we're kind of running on the timeline and I, and I don't want to go too long um, tonight, but I just the books are and you, you told me this would take a while. Um, <laughs> but books are so crazy. Like uh, the three I have here are, are like a set. Um, this guy wrote this one first um, and then these two later. And this one right here has been a real big, like, change in my mindset. Um, if you get a chance to pick this one up, you really should pick this one. It's called Manage Your Day-to-Day. Build your routine, find your focus, and shape your creative mind. Um, I don't think this is just for creative people. I really don't. I think this could help anybody out. I think you read parts of this book. I've time. read that book as well. Okay. Yeah. And so this part really got to me. Um, what you do every day matters more than what I do once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, so powerful. So, so powerful. So like having that constant routine of picking up a book. You know, you see it in movies or TV shows where people put books by their bedside and they read it before they go to bed. And that's such a pretty scene to have. We don't, <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that. Um, but the idea that what I do every day matters more than what I do once in a while. So even though like even like we'll, we'll take flossing. Flossing is just a, a boring, mundane thing. But if you do it every day. It's a huge impact. It's a huge impact to your teeth. And your versus, gums. Yeah, and your gums. Versus, Shout out to Gloria and Dr. Tello's office yeah, in Texas City. <laughs> versus just doing it once in a blue moon. Or yeah. like, oh, I got something stuck in my teeth. Let me flaw. Oh, well, but I floss all of my teeth. You know, versus doing that to like every day. It makes yeah. a huge impact. Yeah. And so what you do um, every day matters more than what you do. And so this book really helped change my mind. This also, this is a book really that got me wanting to get off of social media, wanting to get me to change my um, phone routine. Um, so right now I don't have social media on my phone. Um, I took Amazon, I took Amazon off my phone, which you just learned about today. Yeah. And so. I think in that book is, it is the book that it talks about how social media is, if, if you're using it for building your small business, then it is, work. It is not not pleasure. Pleasure. So you're going in there, you're with you have a goal. You There's complete that your intention. Yeah. You complete the goal. You get off of it. Yeah. And move on to the next thing. Because yeah. you could get lost in the scroll. Right. For sure. Yeah. And even I like, like that. I, I even find that a lot in YouTube. Like um right now YouTube is the only thing I have on my phone because I listen to different podcasts or different stuff on my I'm on YouTube. And so I let that run while I'm doing stuff. Um, and you know, if they, if they start talking, like one of the podcasts I like watching this complex, uh, sneaker podcast, and they were talking today and I was like, Oh man, what do you say? I just have to turn my phone on so I can look at the video, um, to see what was going on. So I kind of like that, but yeah, for the most part, it got me to change a lot of my, um, routine and the focus. Mm-hmm. And so this book has really shaped me. And then the other ones that he wrote, is uh, maximize your potential. This one's a really good one. I've read parts of it. I haven't not finished it, but I've read parts of it. Um, it's about expanding yourself, taking risks, building your um, uh, an incredible career. And so it's it's kind of that next step of like, okay, you're managing this, you're doing the one thing right. Now let's do the next step and mm-hmm. let's get you into a career. Let's let's boost that up. Yeah. Um, and so and then the last one is uh, you know a business with impact. Yeah. You know, not just being a small place is being a business with impact. And I think that's something that really I'm really excited to finish this one um, because I want to kind of get that mindset. But I think for us, like one of the things that we want from our business is to build something that impacts. Yeah. Not just impact our family because that's just going to happen naturally. Yeah. But something that impacts our community, our community, something that impacts yeah. our listeners right now. If you're listening um, we want to, we want, we want this to impact you. We want, we yeah. want to, I, I can't wait to hear stories of people like, man, you know what? I've listened to you guys and I took that chance. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting my own business because we all have the potential to do something. Yeah. Um, right now I'm, I'm watching this Netflix show. Um, and it's about dog training, yeah. which I don't want a dog. I don't want a dog at all. <laughs> no, we don't want but, a dog. For, and you even asked me yesterday, why are you watching this? <laughs> yeah. Um, but because I, I found it interesting, the trailer got in my head. So I, I watched it, but he said, my mom told me to find something you love and find a way to make money out of it. And now he's one of the top dog trainers in Oakland. I mean, he, you see his trailer, he's trained Kevin Hart's dog, um, uh, some other couple of celebrities, I don't know their names on my head, but I know Kevin Hart because he's awesome. Um, <laughs> so shout out Kevin Hart. Um, 
But yeah, I, I just, that line caught my attention and that's what yeah. made me want to watch the show is like, yeah, you have to find something that you love to do yeah, and see how you can make money out of it. Yeah. So we love building stuff. We love doing content. We love working with different brands. I love capturing weddings. I mean, like, you literally, every time you capture a wedding and you say, okay, Rose, I got the finished product, come and watch it. And I end up in tears every single time. And you're just like, yeah, that was it. That's good. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably have to do an episode later on why I love doing it so much and yeah. why we enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so I I, I want to talk about the last two books that I had um, really briefly. I, I really encourage people to read Secret of a Millionaire's Mindset by um, hey, uh, T. Haver uh, Ecker. Um, I read this book. And remember, all links will be down below. Yes. We'll put links down there. Yeah. Uh, I read this book maybe a year ago. And then, I, you know, when you read a book, but you read it really quickly and you you, you move on to other things and you for, yeah. kind of forget the book. I had kind of forgotten the book. And then I reread it for our book club, um, which was so cool because it, it we then were talking much more deeply about it. I took a lot of notes because I wanted to take notes for my book club. And there was a couple of things that I really loved about it. As to what uh, you focus on expands. I mean, mm. that's one of those things that, that you hear a lot, right? Yeah, like what you feed will grow and what you start yeah. with. Die. Yeah, yeah. Um, Correct my mind. Karen, uh, the the second thing that I really loved was uh, recognize the habits and the bad habits that you have um, and correct the mindset. Right. Um, and uh, under um, uh, on finances, particularly. Right. Because it talks about um that you learn a lot of your financial habits from your parents. And even though you try to correct some things, maybe some things are unrecognizable to you. And so you have to go back and continuously check your brain and check your mind on yeah. how you're dealing with your finances. Repeat that. What you said, you, something about your parents, repeat that. Um, a lot of the habits that we learn from finances are from our parents, how we spend our money. Um, do we see money as pleasure or do we see money as um, something when we spend it, we, we spend it for pleasure or oh, yeah. are we, or were they savers? Like yeah, yeah. were, were they people who said, Oh, we can't afford that. Like those kind. And then we yeah. adapt those behaviors because that's what we've seen all of our lives. Yeah. Um, and, or you go the complete opposite way and become like big spenders. Yeah. Did you, did you, I mean, I know you watched uh Sunday service this morning, right? Yeah. Did you hear the quote pastor said? He Which said, one? don't, uh, I think he said it during the baby dedication, but he said, don't give your kids what your parents didn't give you. Oh yeah. Give your kids what your parents didn't teach you. Yes. And yes. I thought that was such a huge line. Yeah. Like that was such a good line. And it kind of goes on what you're talking about right there. Yeah. It's like giving yeah. them what you didn't learn from your parents. Yeah. So financial good. Yeah. Yeah. That's he good. talks about, it's a financial blueprint yeah. that you learn all all the things you uh, you have, the whole relationship with money that you have has to do with your relationship, with, which is what your parents' relationship mm -hmm. look like um, with their finances. And so it's a really great, a great part. One of the other things that I loved about this book is that it gave you declarations. Mm. I'm a real big person on affirmations, yeah, like yeah. A, uh, doing affirmative, uh, aff affirming uh quotes to myself like i, I read yeah. things to myself this is one of I, my I other definitely think that's one of your love languages too because you always yeah. tell, me to tell you i love you yeah i'm always telling myself things like i have this that in at my desk that says you matter and then i a friend of mine rachel um randall she uh, is really, really wonderful. And um, one day randomly at work, she gave me this card and it says, you are brave, bold, kind, proud, courageous, fierce, strong, determined, um, inspiring, and loved. And I say this to myself at mm -hmm. least once a day as well. Um, but one of the things that I, I do a lot of affirmations, but there's a difference between affirmations and declarations Yeah, yeah. and declarations is I will do this. Yeah, I, yeah. I do have a millionaire mindset. I do have, um, the capability to complete this. I, 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 you know, all of the declarations mm -hmm. that, that this book actually goes and declares with you yeah. and they, so what book is this again? This is uh, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. Wow. And the other thing that I loved 
about this book and these two things are the things that I feel like I struggle most with is um, practice being a better receiver. Um, I am terrible at receiving compliments. I am terrible at receiving Same. gifts. I am terrible at receiving um, uh parties. Like I love throwing parties. I love doing things for people. But as soon as they start saying, Oh, Rose, you're so wonderful. Or, or if someone says something from the altar or says something in public saying, Oh, Rose is so great. Immediately. I just kind of like go like this uh, and go hide somewhere. Yeah. Um, and well, good thing we have 10 people coming over and tell you something. Come on in guys. <laughs> <laughs> party no I'm joking. but i'm, I'm the joking. i'm, I'm the worst receiver like people will compliment me and then i'll say oh my gosh but look at you and i'll return the compliment watering down what they said to me and like um i because yeah, i'm a, yeah it, and receiving, receiving it. it yeah and so i um i i've really loved that and um it's part of my new declarations that i will receive compliments and i will receive um, what God is going to give me yeah. um, freely and 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 thankfully. Yeah. Um, the last thing that I learned from this book that I thought, there was two more things that I learned from this book, but promoting myself. I think that we have been taught to not promote ourselves because that's like um, you're being a big headed person or like, um, you know, someone has maybe uh, – turned you down before because you were promoting yourself. And the thing is, is that if you, if you, I've found myself stop promoting myself because of, you know, that bashfulness. Yeah. Right. But what I had to realize and through this book and through my book club, I, Thermilla, one of the, the book club leader, um, and my mentor, she was talking about how, um, how this is something she struggled with. And I literally sat and thought through this. And I, one of the things that I loved about that is that I have value. And if I say I'm good at this, I should recognize that it's not a bad thing to say that, Yeah, you know? Enough. And so, um, I, you guys are going to hear me talk about myself a little bit more. Like I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of what I can accomplish and the capacity that I can accomplish yeah. things at. And, um, and I, I don't feel like I should be ashamed of that anymore. And I, and I have been for a long time. So I feel like this book was such an amazing book. Yeah. I love the declarations. I love the, the, the things that it, it had very practical things, but, um, and then also I loved about this book was that it gave you a very clear kind of like, this is what wealthy people do. Do it. Yeah. Here are the things. And I, I love I think that. That's really, really important. Like, I think, I think this was a really good episode to kind of go over about books and kind of give resources. Um, Cause I know last week we talked about our mindset the week before that um, we talked about, you know, some of the things we have to overcome as a couple um, me as an individual and so like giving resources back is definitely one thing what I want this channel to be about and what I want people to kind of gain because it's kind of one of the things that we do in our business. We want to give resources. We want to give value back to people. Yeah. We want to give value yeah. back to, you know, a couple that, that hires for the way. I want to give them valuable stuff that in 10 years and 20 years they can look back and say, man, I love this. Yeah. Or, you know, a business that's looking for new content for their website. Like I want to give them valuable stuff back to make them to give them that self confidence, and I think that that so has like to go. Books yeah, do that for us. Yeah, when we're reading a book, it gives us that self confidence, like you're talking about. It gives you that confidence. It gives you that that stuff. And so we want to encourage you guys, pick up a book. I mean, I think if you guys, I I would say my my biggest thing that that I did is I didn't go out and buy new books. I mean, I know I have these three new books that are here, um, but I didn't go out and buy new books. I had uh, Steal Like an Artist and Manage Day by Day already. Uh, one, I love their their style. So black books really appeal to me. Um, and so I love their style. I even have this like this uh, poet book that I think it was yours. It was a, like a dead poet book. Yeah. Um, and it was all black. And so I kept it. Um, <laughs> and so I think I think start with the books you have. If you have a book in your house that you bought because oh I want to read it. I want to become a reader. Read it. Yeah. Just pick it up. Pick it up and read it. If you need to go buy the Audible version of it so you can read with it, do it. Um, something that I, I've learned years ago, um, it was from a motivational speaker. He told me, I read books and when I feel like I got what I need, I stop reading it. And so he his goal isn't that he doesn't finish them. Sometimes he finishes them, sometimes he don't. But 
I, I did that several times with this book. I picked it up. I read a chapter. I read two chapters. I got what I needed and I put it down and I just stopped reading it. And then like, oh, I need it again. So I'll do the same thing. And I'll like pick it up and I'll start reading it. And um, this ye last year, I read the whole thing cover to cover um, because it was just a good book. But you, you we can get so um, discouraged. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't finish the whole book. Who cares? Yeah. If you got valuable content from the book and you read maybe 50 pages, 20 pages, that's a win. Yeah. That's something you didn't have before. That's a knowledge you didn't have previously to reading the book. Yeah. So even if you're only reading a little bit, read it. Get started. Get, yeah, get started. Get Build a habit. And like I said, what you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. And so yeah. even if you read the book five minutes every day, a minute every day, or you read this book to another book to another book to another book, and you never finish one book, that's okay. Pick up a book and start reading it because it will change your life. It yeah. will change the way you think. It will change the way you feel about yourself. I and think so too, one of the things that, that I love about just pick up a book and read it is that it doesn't come one day to the next that you build a habit, right? It takes time for you to build a habit. So if it, you just have to start. Yeah. Make an intentional effort to just get started and do it. Yeah. I think uh, that podcast that I've been listening to a lot um, is the Think Media podcast. They're great people on YouTube. So thank you so much. You guys motivate me a lot to mm -hmm. start what I'm doing. But even in their intro and their role, you just got to hit record. Like, <laughs> sorry for the bad voiceover. But that was the way they said it. Like, you just got to hit record. Yeah. And um, it's true. You just got to start. You just got to so start. We just want to thank everybody for watching. Yes, absolutely. We hope that you like, subscribe. Um, if you have a favorite book, write it in the comment. I want to know what your favorite book is. Let us know what you think about these books. And like I said, we'll leave these these books in the comment uh, in, in the, the description below. We'll leave links. I don't know why I've had another book. We'll put that down there too. Uh, we want you guys to become readers because that's been one of the things that have been really motivating us and really changed us and really 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 changed our mindset over the last few years yeah absolutely and so pick up a book read it and again thank you so much we hope you liked this video we know it's a little bit longer than before but i think the content and what we talked about is meaningful enough that you should take away something from this episode and so thank you so much we hope that you like subscribe obviously subscribe it's it's a huge support it doesn't do much for you guys but just hit subscribe um and enjoy your day <laughs> <laughs>